Coming up, we'll take a look at why drinking water is so important for our bodies and how much we should have every day. Plus, why water is also good for our minds. Then as millions of kids head back to school, free lunches for all are coming to an end. What you need to know about that. Also ahead, inside the U.S. Mint, where money is made. We're there with a preview of the new quarters honoring American women. And Field of Dreams will introduce you to this teenage athlete who is hitting it out of the park with his inspirational journey. There's been some people that tell me I can't play baseball. And the biggest thing is, you know, don't, I, I don't just sit there and just argue with them and tell them that I can. I just prove them wrong by, by, by playing. This is NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It's great to be with you. We've got a super lineup ahead, including an update on this little guy. Plus, something really cool was just uncovered in Texas, and we've got the inside track. But first, let's begin with the weather and the summer heat. Labor Day weekend is upon us, and it marks the unofficial end of summer, and it looks like it will be sizzling in some areas. This week, parts of the country are under heat alerts, coming just in time for Labor Day weekend. We all know staying hydrated, especially in hot temperatures, is something we need to do. And it got us thinking, just why is drinking water so important? Here with the answers is our pal, Dr. John Torres. Water is essential for nearly every living thing on Earth, including us people. But why? Well, for us humans, many of the jobs our body does need water. In fact, Every single cell in the body needs water to work. It helps with movement by cushioning the joints and tissues, plays a big role in making saliva and digesting food, and assists with regulating body temperature. So how much water does a person need? That depends on a few factors, like age, the temperature, and what activities someone is doing. A common benchmark for water is eight glasses a day, but that can be a little confusing because we get water from a variety of sources. Of course, from drinking it, but also through food. Fruits and vegetables have a lot of water. So does yogurt and soup, and even my favorite, popsicles. If it's hot outside or you're doing physical activity, you'll need more water because these situations cause you to sweat, which is your body working to cool itself down. Sweating uses a lot of water. Not having enough water can cause dehydration. That's when your body doesn't have the amount of water it needs to carry out its normal functions. Symptoms include extreme thirst, dizziness, and fatigue. Most of the time, dehydration can be reversed by drinking water and resting. In more severe cases, you may need to go to the doctor. To prevent dehydration, don't wait till you're super thirsty to start drinking water. You should drink it throughout the day. Try to make that a habit. And to help me stay hydrated, I always keep a reusable water bottle with me, whether I'm at home, outside, or at work. And a reminder, hydrating is not just for the summer. It's important to drink water all year round. Dr. John, thanks so much. Well, speaking of water, did you know water also could be good for your mind? Studies show that spending just a few minutes in the water or nearby a body of water can improve your mental health and boost your mood. Here with more is our friend, Dr. Natalie Azar. Dr. Azar, we just explained the importance of water on our physical health, but it turns out water can also benefit our mental health. Can you explain that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think, Lester, we've all experienced that sort of calm and joy that comes with a visit to the beach or to a lake. And, well, scientists have actually shown that being near or in a body of water actually can reduce the amount of stress that we feel, how much we worry. It can really relax our minds and even rejuvenate us, give our brains more energy. So you're not just imagining that you feel better. Science really shows that you are, in fact, doing better, Lester, when yeah, you're near it, water. Yeah, it confirms something I found. Every time I take a walk on the beach, it's just like it clears your brain. Anyway, there's some important ways kids and grown-ups can use water to help them de-stress or relieve anxiety. What are some of them? That's right. Well, so the beauty of this, Lester, is that 
all water counts. We're talking about, let's say you live like in a landlocked state, for example, and you can't get to, uh, you know, the ocean or something like that. Well, guess what? You can you can maybe get to a beach or you can get to a pool or you can go to a lake. Um, you can even engage in water sports. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a large body of water, but even something at home like a sprinkler can even achieve that kind of effect around water, Lester. And of course, the holiday weekend is coming up, but some of us may not be able to get to the beach or a pool or a lake this weekend. So if you're in a city or a landlocked state, are there alternatives for kids and grown-ups to get some water experiences? Well, there are actually, Lester, and the way I think of it is you kind of have to use your senses in your head. So for example, use your eyes. You can look at pictures of water. You can watch videos. You can even use your imagination as something that we're all pretty familiar with is listening to the sounds of water. Some of the most calming um, apps out there and the, and the most common ones that are listened to are ones that contain the sounds of water, like oceans and things like that. That's really fascinating. Great to know. Dr. Natalie Azar, always fun to have you here. Thanks so much. Thanks, Lester. All right, let's turn now to another story on a lot of people's minds lately, and that is the start of the school year. Do you know for the first time in two years, free school meals will no longer be offered to every student now that a government program that came out around the pandemic has ended? Here to explain is our friend Emily Iketa. Single mom Jamie Bunches has relied on free or reduced price lunches for her fourth grade son since he was in kindergarten. What does that extra money mean to you? Savings. I can put it towards groceries. I can put it in my gas tank. She says paying for his lunch would cost her more than $1,000 a year. I added it up and it was like $118 a month. And it, you do that times nine, it's over $1,000 a year. So to me, it was like, oh my gosh, because I also have to, you know, buy groceries. It's a lot of money for families already tight on cash, especially those impacted by the end of the federal free school meals for all program, a pandemic era initiative that's now expired. For the last two and a half years, um, every child in America has been eligible to receive free school meal regardless of the income of their family. And that's been thanks to some very special policies that the government has put in place um, to help support kids and families during the pandemic. Unfortunately, um, free school meals for all kids is coming to a close as school is starting or has already started in many places in the U.S. And, um, and that's really challenging because it's happening at a time that's really complicated and, and challenging for kids kids and families across America with um, rising food prices, rising food insecurity, schools still struggling financially, um, and COVID still being a challenge in many communities across the country. More than 26 million free meals were served every day because of the program. Now families must apply for meal coverage and only those meeting certain income requirements will receive the free lunches. We think it's critically important, first of all, that families and kids are aware of some of the significant changes that are taking place. Parents are going to have to go and fill out those applications. It also means that schools are going to have to take time to verify eligibility for a free or reduced price meal. And it's also really important to know there's no deadline. So that application can be filled out at any point. Nationwide, around one in six students don't always know where their next meal is coming from. Here in the Greeley Evans School District, food insecurity is even more severe. 65% of students qualify for free or reduced price lunches. But in this Denver suburb, they're doing something different. The school board has decided to allocate $2 million so every one of the 23,000 students in the district can still eat for free. Danielle Bach is the head of nutrition. A lot of our families are just over the threshold of what qualifies them for the free and reduced meal program. So we know that those families don't necessarily have the money to pay for those meals. While some believe universal free lunch should be made permanent, critics say it was only intended to be a pandemic era program. By returning these programs back to normal, we can uphold our responsibility to taxpayers and the principle that aid should be targeted and temporary. 
But Bach argues this year is far from normal, as staffing shortages, supply chain slowdowns and inflation further complicate lunchtime nationwide. Our goal is to, to teach kids how to learn and think, but they can't do that when they're hungry. Back to school, bringing back challenges in feeding America's children. All right, Emily, great information. Thank you. The United States Mint is releasing artwork for the second installment of their American Women Quarters series, honoring women in U.S. history who were pioneers and made an impact on America. Our good friend Stephanie Rule takes us behind the scenes at the U.S. Mint in Philadelphia for a look. Change is underway at the U.S. Mint, and not just the kind found in your pocket. Seen for the first time ever on Today, the artwork for the 2023 American Women Quarter Series featuring Bessie Coleman, the first African and Native American woman pilot, Edith Kanaka Ole, indigenous Hawaiian composer, First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, Jovita Idar, Mexican American journalist and activist, and Maria Tall Chief, America's first prima ballerina. They're really beautiful designs and they showcase these women who just mean so much to American history. A lot of them are unknown to some people. Now in its second of four years, the Mint is honoring 20 remarkable American women on these tiny canvases. Once the winning artwork is chosen, the Mint produces metal pieces called hubs that are engraved with the designs. We're literally making money. Yes, you're literally making money. Those hubs and stamp-like dies are used to press blank coins with their characteristic raised edges and the final images, in this case, with trailblazing women featured on both sides of the coin. The front, for the first time in history, is sculpted. The quarter is sculpted with one of the greatest American female sculptors. Once the coins are struck, they're inspected, counted, and weighed before being shipped out in one-ton bags. Every day, 35 million coins are produced in this building, and each coin goes through 10 separate steps of production before it can leave the mint and maybe get to your piggy bank. To many, these quarters are worth a lot more than 25 cents. When I was a kid, I never imagined that I could be designing coins for the United States Mint. There are so many ways that you could use your art to make an impact on the world. They're a tiny but mighty source of inspiration. What do you want kids watching to know about this? Rather than just ask for their mom and dad for some change after they're at a store. I think it teaches our kids that even when you have things that stand in your way, you should still fight for what you believe in and what you want to be because each of these women have done that. Making history and change along the way. Okay, Stephanie, thanks so much for that. Let's switch gears now and head to Texas, where a new discovery has been made. Officials say some 60 footprints from a dinosaur that lived millions of years ago were uncovered recently in Dinosaur Valley State Park. Severe drought conditions caused the riverbed to dry up and the dinosaur tracks to be unearthed. All right, meanwhile, Fritz, the baby hippo, finally had a chance to meet his big sister, Fiona, for the first time at the Cincinnati Zoo. Zoo officials released this video just days ago showing the two siblings bonding. It's terrific to see. Finally, in our Inspiring Kids series, we want to introduce you to a teenager from Indiana who is hoping to inspire other kids with his very own field of dreams. For me, Baseball is everything. Like other kids in rural Indiana, Landis Sims grew up dreaming of becoming an athlete. But how he got there is a journey few have taken. You know, I'm missing my hands and feet. I've grown up knowing nothing different. Although it's very rare, before he was born, doctors diagnosed Landis as being limb deficient. He was missing his hands and lower legs. His mom, Amanda Wolf, recalls how everything changed, though, once Landis was born. I just expected something completely different. And then he was born, and then it all changed, because I learned that he didn't need his hands and feet to accomplish all the things that he really wanted to accomplish. As soon as he could hold a bat, he had his little plastic bats, and he was playing, and it just became this obsession. It's one of those things where uh, I'm constantly trying to be better, and I don't let myself just, you know, be 
decent. I want to be the best. Landis' passion for sports started at a very young age. He started playing basketball at the age of three and baseball at four. Good job, Landis. He went on to play Little League and then made his varsity baseball team in high school. I've always had challenges in my life, but that's never scared me. The 16-year-old just wrapped up a summer tour, visiting cities across the country promoting Just Watch Me, a new film documenting his journey hoping to inspire others. Everybody's got something that they've got to work through. Everybody has to work to earn whatever position it is that they want to earn. Landis isn't considered any different by anybody. There's been some people that tell me I can't play baseball. And the biggest thing is, you know, don't, I, I don't just sit there and just argue with them and tell them that I can. I just, I just prove them wrong by, by, by playing. But Landis and his mom admit some days are hard. When it came to talking to Landis, it was just that reminder with him that we can have hard days. Today can be a really hard day, but tomorrow has to be a better day. Tomorrow we get up and we face it head on. And to help him face some of those obstacles head on is the Challenged Athletes Foundation, the nonprofit providing him with customized prosthetic running blades and also a partner in the film. They come in and they say, we will supply that running blade for that kid so that they can live their dream. I got my new legs and I'm ready to hit some homers. With him every step of the way, Landis's biggest advocate, his mom. Uh, my mom's kind of taught me everything growing up. She made my glove, my first glove, so that I could, you know, use to throw out of. And, um, you know, she's always had these ideas how to make me better. And then she's always kind of pushed me. She's never really let me give up on anything. So she's always pushed me to be better. Landis has taught me many things over the years. Uh, the biggest is just how to persevere and how to work through all of your challenges. And it's understanding that sometimes it's going to take me 20 times a failure before I really get it right. A lesson for all, no matter the challenge. Everybody's going to face challenges. doesn't matter who you are or what situation you're in. You're going to see challenges every day in life. Just keep chasing your dreams and keep working hard to get to, you know, the point that you want to be at in life. Oh, Landis, that's terrific. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Well, that's going to do it for us, parents. Just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com and we'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. You can also follow us on Instagram at Nightly Kids. Thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long.